Um, I'm, you know, because we've done well here on the show and, uh, you know, that's no secret to anyone and we're, we're, you know, grateful to all the fans for that. Uh, I've decided to get a personal trainer and this is something that I have put off doing for a long time. And, uh, and I, I didn't say out of fear, but I finally found somebody that I think I connected with and somebody who I look at as an example of what I think I can do. And that's big to me to find someone who I, I look at a, a certain body type, I look at somebody, I go, that's out of reach or that's something that I can't do. But this is someone who I met with. We had a consultation. He understood my limitations and he, un he understands the potential there. And uh, I'm excited about this. And I think that it'll be, it'll challenge me. You know, this will be something that, um, you know, I don't, you know, I take lightly. This is something that I'm really going to now really try to do with this person who I think who's I'm fully committed and, and they are fully committed and they have represented some people, you know, and they've, you know, coached, I don't even know the term trained some of the most famous people in the world. Um, so this is my personal trainer, Pat. I was Ralph May's personal trainer. And you see how that went? He really tried to pull a guy. At least I got his money. Yeah. Well, he did work with Ralphie at the end. And I don't think we can look at the results. I think we have to look at the journey. And I think the journey was valuable. And I think even though that didn't necessarily end in the way that, you know, is, is positive, I think, I don't think it's your fault. I think you certainly did the best and what what are your plans for me what should i really be i mean looking forward to and what what should i be kind of like focused on lots of walking yeah well we can do that we certainly can do that but again this is someone who gets me and he gets what i'm capable of and so many trainers when i've met with them don't and they push me uh Pat has said, I don't really or shouldn't even think about going to a gym for three to four years, which I think is important to just kind of start slow. And isn't that right, Pat? You said I should just really not push myself. And this is something that I'm... I trained Lizzo too. Yeah, he's trained Lizzo, and he, they're getting very serious now with Lizzo. You know, and I saw you know, Lizzo kind of walking you around the mall and kind of pushing you around, and I think that's, that's good. That's where I'm going to start. We're starting just kind of moving Pat through certain, you know, areas. It's amazing when you meet someone who has a passion for fitness that Pat does, because I have not, you know, my whole life I haven't had one, but Pat has kind of showed me that fitness isn't necessarily any one thing. Fitness could mean many, many things. And the passion that he has for fitness and what he's been able to do at one time, I think he weighed over four or 500 pounds. And what he's been able to do, you know, with his body is completely, is very impressive. Um, and I, I am just in awe of that. And it's something that I want to emulate. And this is something- Breathing is even a workout too. Yes, yes, breathing is. And that's what he told me, he goes, breath control and breathing is, is probably the most important thing and that I shouldn't really get into weights or cardio to just kind of just the in and the out, the in and the out, the in and the out. Are you, are you taking on any new clients right now? Is there, is there anything that you're excited about? Is there anything that you want to promote or you're promoting any fitness programs? Cause I don't want to keep all this to myself. You know, there's a lot of people out there that need help and, one thing I've learned is that when you have something good, you want to give it away. You want to share it because that becomes, you know, a really important part of the journey of growth is not hoarding the knowledge, sharing it freely with other people. And Pat has a lot of this. You hopefully you won't die like Ralph did. Well, that's the goal. That is certainly the goal. But we go, we go nice and slow. That's what we've learned. Slow and steady wins the race. And that's what Pat has always said. We don't want to move too quickly. We don't want to disrupt the systems that we've come to rely on. And uh, 
it's really amazing, you know, how, how you've inspired me. And I, I want to thank you again for everything that you've done, not only for me, but for several other people that in this business that you've worked with. And, you know, the trainers don't get a lot of attention. You know, nobody, you, nobody calls and says, hey, what a great job. But you've 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 done a lot, and uh, it's I really am I'm excited to to work with you and to see where this relationship goes. I think it's just going to be amazing, and and a lot of people are very excited that I've chosen Pat, you know, because a lot of people were worried that I would choose some, you know one of these L.A. bullshit trainers, but I chose someone who I believe is inspiring and committed. It's been an amazing. Uh, time we've worked together for two months we haven't really done anything yet physically but the the point is to really just kind of fully you know he has me reading through the history of gyms and personal fitness and exercise writing a lot about that and you know just reading a lot of theory and that's where i think the other trainers don't work hard like I do. That's a good point. A lot of them don't. And it's unfortunate. And it's something that I think, you know, is, is really amazing is that when you find somebody who, who gets it. And uh, I want to thank you. And I just want to, I hope that you don't give up on me. Just don't give up on me. That's all I'm asking. I know sometimes it might be frustrating, but we're in this for the long haul. I just, I'm, I'm just hoping that you are in this as well for the long haul with me. This is, uh, you know, it's a, you're a spectacular find, and uh, I hope you're as committed to this as I am. I will never give up on me, but it's a really good paycheck. Well, there you have it. This is my new personal trainer, Pat. Thank you so much for everything. And we, we, we appreciate it. And again, if you're interested in, in, in training with Pat, uh, contact me via DM and we'll get you his information because he's absolutely one of the best. Thank you so much. I took the Helix quiz. I was matched with the firm mattress because I sleep on my side and it's great. I love it. It's a huge upgrade. It's something that's very important. Sleeping is one of the most important things in life because you're rested, you're ready to take on everything. But a lot of people out there don't sleep well, so they're insane. What do you think about sleeping? I love sleeping, man. It's the best. Especially with Helix, it makes it a lot more fun. Well, Helix makes your bed match you perfectly. Nice. Right? Nice. Because here's what Helix does. They, like Ben will fill out a quiz and they go, oh, this guy's an idiot. Where would he want to sleep? And then they match him with the bed that's right for someone whose thoughtless head hits the pillow every night. Somebody like me, they go, oh, we got to get a bed for a genius. They have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't look. I mean, this is in all actuality, all of my beds are Helix. Mm -hmm. They're easy. They come in the thing. You know, mm -hmm. they ship them to you. I mean, it's really good. You have the, they have the pillows, free pillows. They're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows mm -hmm. for our listeners. Helix sleep.com slash Tim D helix sleep.com slash Tim D go and get, because here's the deal. They're cheap and they will ship them to you when they're great beds. Yeah. 10 year warranty. I've never heard of a mattress having Something like that. And they can do financing options, which right now with, uh, you know. I mean, know. it's huge. Great yeah. idea. You might want to keep that cash. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Helix is just, it's taking over the market. You know? Helixsleep.com slash Tim D. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, Tim Dillon Show. That was our friend Pat. Pat. Our very funny friend Pat, who, uh has a muscular dystrophy and we uh, brought him out to California. My voice is going and uh, it's not COVID. We've, I've tested 95 times, mm -hmm. no cigarettes, five days. Um, but you're going to hear the voices. Uh, it's a little strained, mm -hmm. but instead of abandoning you and giving you nothing, 
we're doing an episode. But that was our friend Pat, who um, we flew out here uh, with his mother and his nurse um, to be a part of the show. And, you know, no one's going to write an article about that, but maybe they should. Maybe they should. And maybe if you are in the press and you want to write an article and stop lying about the homes I have and start saying, who does more for people with muscular dystrophy than Tim Dillon, right? Is Trash Tuesday bringing out cripples? No. No, no, no they are not. No, they are not. <laughs> So of course I'm here and I, it's not, and I don't do nice things to keep bringing them up. It's not a big deal that we paid for the whole thing and brought them out here with his family. It doesn't matter. It's something that anyone would have done. And I'm not bringing it up to, to, to basically try to get goodwill for, for myself or for this show. I'm what I'm stating is a fact that we did a selfless act and when an act is selfless, you don't need to bring it up. And we don't. And I don't. Mm -mm. I, I don't bring it up. I say one time what we did. I tell you one time what we did. And then if you want to go to the press, you can go to the press. And I am available to do interviews about it because it was a nice thing to do. He was a sweetheart of a, a man. And we like him a lot. And um, his nurse was a little bit wacky. His nurse was a little wacky. His nurse, now, again, with the nurses, I'm telling you right now, these nurses, I'm telling you they're, I mean, it's, I'm not even going into like hacky COVID nurse shit. That's for my special. It'll be out in seven months. But I'm telling you the nurses have to be watched because this guy's nurse ended up stealing his credit card and then sucking dick for crack on Sunset Boulevard at like three o'clock in the morning. This is true. This is all true. And his nurse was on many drugs, and and it was very strange to me. Am I lying? No. So far, no lies. So far, no lies. So I'm just saying we wish the best to everyone involved because his nurse was, it was stunning. The nurse hadn't been a nurse for a while, and then they brought him back mm -hmm. for this, like, I think they fired him because he was doing drugs with the guy. And then they said, you can't do drugs with them. And I think the nurse's attitude was like, who cares? It'll be fun. You know, he's lived longer than we thought he would live. Let's mm -hmm. have a party. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think the parents were like, let's not do that. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of here. And then they brought him back for this one trip. And they go, oh, we're going to LA to do the Tim Dillon show. We're going to bring you on this trip. And the nurse then went buck wild. As soon as he got here, he raided a mini bar. He was insane. And he stole the kid's credit card and he smoked crack. And I believe he was sucking people off for crack. <laughs> this is what I heard. And the guy has a voice app, this guy, Pat. Mm. And at the lunch, the voice app would be, he would be like, you know, the nurses, I'm not going to say the nurse's name, but whatever. The voice that would be like, he is also an alcoholic. He drinks all day. And you would just be sitting there and like looking at the nurse like, ha, 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 ha. So what are you going to do? But but a lot of fun and mm -hmm. very good, and very nice people. Mm -hmm. um, Chessa Budin, the San Francisco District attorney was just recalled. They had a recall election mm. for Chesa Budin. This was the guy who was, he wanted to reform the criminal justice system in San Francisco. Um, he wanted to reform it till there was none. Like he was, he was basically, he was like, if you get stabbed, he was like, hey, that's part of it. Calm down. And he treated, he treated the drug addicts in San Francisco kind of the way I treat my friends that are on drugs. Mm -hmm. I ignore them and I don't care what happens to them. And I don't care who they hurt and how. So Chesa Budin, uh, they got him out of there because people got sick of this idea that you're just going to let the uh, drug problem, mm -hmm. the fentanyl problem, uh, it's becoming so bad in San Francisco right now um, 
Because there are no Republicans that live there. Nobody lives there as a Republican. Mm. It is the vast majority of people are somewhere on the left. Mm. And they threw, because if you're like, if you're a hardcore Republican, you left already. You're, you, you know? Mm. So they threw him out um, because uh, they were sick of these open air drug markets because San Francisco, there's this harm reduction policy they have that allows people on drugs to just kind of use drugs and they create areas for them to use drugs safely. Mm -hmm. And many of these people OD and die because, you know, it's easier for them to use drugs in San Francisco than another city. And, you know, it's sad, right? It's a difficult, it's a difficult thing. <clears throat> it's a tough thing to, to know what to do because fentanyl is good and people that do it for the most part are happy with it. And, <clears throat> I have recommended to my friends that they should look into getting a drug addiction because it's not a bad way to die. It's a very sexy and kind of mm -hmm. heroin chic, glamorous, be, to be a real junkie on the street mm -hmm. with your pussy out and bleeding and spitting and screaming. And there's something I like about it. And I've always liked this and I've told you that. I'm too old for this behavior, of course, but mm -hmm. but there's something about being a young, like Rent, you know, Daphne Rubin Vega and Rent, we've got a big Puerto Rican tits out and she's got AIDS. There's something about that that I think is nice. And I don't want to lose that part of San Francisco. Like I, there's something about like a real junkie, like a real junkie who mm -hmm. comes in her house and her mother goes, where have you been? She goes, yeah, don't understand me. And she goes in and she locks herself in her room and she just, cries her mascara off in the tub and nobody knows what's torturing her, but it's, it's, it's because somebody, you know, touched her inappropriately years ago at a summer camp and she can never, she can never get that out, but she writes a poem about it. Like she writes like a, like a, you know, three stands a poem and they decode it after her death and go, fuck Frank fingered her once <laughs> in the thing. And she went nuts, but whatever it is, there's something deep and dark and sexy and important about that type of behavior. And I don't want to get rid of all addict behavior. I don't. I think it's important for children, specifically children, to see people in the streets flailing their arms, foaming at the mouth, seizing up, breaking into cars. I do think it's important to see that for children, specifically children, so that they can decide kind of which way in life they want to go. I do like that. I do like a little bit of Gotham City after the light has gone down. I do like a little bit of that. Now, it's going to be very difficult to keep that because it is hurting people mm -hmm. and people are angry with it. And I, and I completely understand. There's a lot of homeless people in California, tons. I have a friend here now from Ireland that I'm showing him mm. all the different places. And, and, you know, people are, they're stunned by the inequality. Mm -hmm. They're stunned by the inequality in the country, even with the tents, the mm -hmm. inequality. Mm -hmm. Some people have very big tents. It's almost like a small home. And some people just lay right out on the street. So the inequality is even present in the unhoused community. There's so much inequality even with the unhoused because some people have these beautiful structures they've built really attached to overpasses and things. Some people are living in cars. Mm -hmm. And then we saw a woman take her pants off right out on the street today. And a lot of these people are in a bad situation and some of them um, are going to be, because Rick Caruso now is coming. Rick Caruso is the mayor of uh, the Grove and he, he built something called the Grove. And everyone in LA loves the Grove. I've only been to the Grove once or twice, but you, you people like you like the Grove, right? Isn't it? That's who it's for. It's, it's for nice. you. It's nice. It's a nice. Isn't uh, it for you and your wife and people like that? Just They, they have a movie theater. Uh, they have sprinkles, cupcakes. Uh, right. This is my point. So they love it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like him and his wife, people like that. There's nothing wrong with them. These are the people that there's nothing wrong with them. You know what I mean? They get they put the fuel in the plane. <laughs> Listen, but look, show them a photo of this, the Grove here, because yeah. it's uh, it's stunning. It's like Europe. Mm -hmm. It's like Paris. Oh, my God. It's like Paris, except you're in L.A. That's what's so special about it. And it's, it's like European and sexy. Mm -hmm. Remember when we saw Sebastian Maniscalco there once and he didn't make eye contact with us? 
Love it. <laughs> now, at the Grove, uh, Rick Caruso is a billionaire uh, developer, right? Mm -hmm. We've right. talked about him on the show. Mm -hmm. What happened with him? He just ha they had an election. I barely pay attention to what goes on here because I I'm I'm like I don't know. I've got my well, I'm one foot out of here. I'm one toe in, one toe out. Tell the people what happened. I have no voice. So 42% uh, to 37%. Rick won by 5%. But since it's not an overwhelming majority of 50%, how it works in mayoral races is that it's going to run to uh, it's going to go into a uh, runoff. That was my nose November. being blown. <laughs> so Rick Caruso is mm. the mayor of the Grove in Los Angeles. He owns this big, uh, he owns this thing, mm. with stores, right? And there's a trolley. There is a trolley, so yeah. So there's a trolley that'll take yeah, you see right there. fat ass around. And the trolley, you get off the trolley and mm. you go right into a store mm. and you buy something. Well, it's lovely. Now, he's the mayor of the Grove and now he wants to be the mayor of Los Angeles, California. And people are upset with the homeless. They're angry with the homeless. Um, and I get it. I get it because it's, it's gross here. It's truly disgusting here. To show anyone the city is gross. It's embarrassing. We went down to Santa Monica and there's just people in the middle of the street screaming. Going, but part of why I don't get as angry about that is it seems appropriate, right? Like for the culture that we've created, doesn't it seem a little appropriate? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be weirder if people weren't in the middle of the street screaming? Would it be, and I'm not saying that this is a nice place, but I think the, I mean, you know, I, I'm just, this is the result of years and years and years and years of not giving a shit about any of the problems, right? So like when people just go, you know, the homeless right now, it's a big problem. I go, yes, it is. But it's also the result of many, many years of people not caring about anything at all. And so what that's resulted in is this societal uh, collapse. So it's not, it didn't happen yesterday. It's not like a bunch of people yesterday just were like, fuck houses, mm -hmm. I'm out. Now what has happened is we've made it easier for drug addicts to do drugs and buy drugs in the street. Mm -hmm. Not good. I don't like that. But fucking, I don't know, legalize drugs. Put them, you know what I mean? Get the methadone clinics going, figure it out, build housing for them. Kill them like the Asians do. They don't fuck with, go the other way. You don't want to go the, the other way, go the other way. Kill them. The Asians will kill them. Singapore, right? They just kill them. Mm -hmm. Death penalty, yeah. Yeah, to give them the death penalty then. I, I don't really know <laughs> which way to go. I'm divided. Either legalize drugs and compassionately like hold their hand mm -hmm. and put them in a nice place and maybe suggest they don't do it like lightly, go... You don't have to do that. There is a place for you to do it if you want, but you don't have to. Or just shoot them in the back of the head. <laughs> like, or You know what I mean? Like they do in, the, in Indonesia, right? Like do you have a military hunter that just kills them? I don't know what to do. I'm, I, it's either or. It's either, it's either one. Because the, the, in the middle doesn't seem to work. Mm -hmm. In the middle doesn't seem to work. Because I guess that's what we're doing now. So you have to kill them all. Like they do in like Indonesia or you have to build like affordable housing and then like get high with them. Well, I don't mean homeless people, but I mean drugs. Sure, sure, sure. Like drugs. I'm not listening. There's a lot of reasons people are homeless. It could be everything from they have a crippling drug addiction to they were a horrible podcast mm. producer. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons people end up on the street. More than 7,000 killed in the Philippines in six months as the president encourages murder. I got to be honest. They keep telling me not to like this guy. This guy's a very interesting person. Rodrigo Duterte. Um, now, why are they killing the people? Is there a reason for it? So it says this is from 2017. Uh, he ordered the police to kill anyone they believe to be connected <clears throat> to the drugs trade when he assumed office in June 2016. So according to police <laughs> counts in the Philippines... <laughs> 
7,025 people were killed by the police or unknown armed attackers in the war on drugs between July 1st and January 30th, 2017. It's a hardline approach. 34 days. It's a hardline approach. Hardline approach here. Mm. And that's one way to do it, right? You, you could kill them all and even people that are just near them. But there's got to be a better way than that, perhaps. But maybe not. Mm. I don't know. I'm not an expert in this. Like this uh, Chesa Budin, he's a real problem. Mm. But, like, if I was a, a mayor of San Francisco, I don't know what I would do. I don't. Because I don't really like San Francisco. I don't mind it. It's it's foggy and cold. I like sea lions when they're on a wharf. You know the when they're on a wharf, mm -hmm. it's kind of filthy. They're kind of a filthy animal. Yeah, yeah. But and I don't like the hills. So my mm -hmm. point is, I don't I don't even know what I would do about the whole thing. It, Marin County is nice, but I you know the tech people bother me. Mm -hmm. What's worth saving is my point. I don't know what I'm, I don't know if I'm into it. So, I mean, I'm just saying, why not give these people a section of the city, like an entire section? I think they have actually in San Francisco. I think they have given them. What I mean is like, give them, give them a part of the city where, when they can't go anywhere else. I mean, is that a good idea? Like, you draw a line around this area and they go, listen, this is where you get fucked up. Mm. This is where you get fucked up, but you can't leave. And you just get fucked up in this part. Is that, is that rational? Like uh, like Chaz or something like that? Like one of those well, areas? Well, you, 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 you make it for them. Mm -hmm. You design it. Like that's what I thought Rick Caruso was going to do was designing a whole area for them with a trolley and everything. Cause they, I think they'd like the trolley. They could get on and off. And what I'm imagining is that Rick Caruso is going to lock these people in a room and burn them all. <laughs> and you might have to, here's my thing. I, there might not be a better way to do it. You might have to just genocide everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it seems it seems mean. And you'd have to explain it to your kids. You'd have to go, that was mean. We did a thing that was mean. What did you do? We did a genocide of all of the homeless people. <laughs> but I don't, I, don't I, I, I mean, I'm so out of ideas on this. I'm, I'm, I'm so all over the place. You know, we don't have a lot of, vigil of vigilantism, right? Which is nice. There's not a lot of people like driving around setting homeless people on fire. No, it's not really a thing. That's not really a thing. And I'm not saying to do that. Would it hurt? Yes. I'm just saying that that's, that's, there's ideas to that, right? Where you go, well, I'll just start lighting them up. Like, that's an idea that's not good. I'm going through ideas. <laughs> I'm not going through the good ideas. I'm going through all of the ideas. Um, why don't we do, like, a thing where we take, like, Ty Lopez, mm. Gary Vanyarchuk, Grant Cardone, all these sales trainers, mm -hmm. and do a big reality show called America's Next Top homeless entrepreneur and it's a show where we select 10 unhoused people to compete to become an entrepreneur we have chris jenner as a guest judge mm -hmm. it's shot in la it's shot in the mecca of homelessness it's shot in the ground zero if you will r.i.p to all those people who pretended to die but why not do a show? Why not do a show where you have homeless people in L.A. flocking 
I want every homeless person in America, in LA. We've got 70%. I want 100%. And I want them here. And I want to embrace homelessness instead of like, like, instead of like, I have to be embarrassed when I'm driving this, this dude around going like, oh yeah, this is a homeless. I want to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the place for homeless. Why not be like the place for homeless people? <laughs> have a big show, like a big reality <laughs> show. Have homeless village, like entire villages in a Have class structure in the unhoused community. Like basically, like why not embrace it? Why not have that be our thing? Be like, we have more people without homes than any other city in this whole fucking dump of a country. We have more homeless people. But I think it's a great idea. America's, and you know, all of these sales trainers mm -hmm. and motivational speakers can, can really coach these homeless fentanyl addicts whose minds were scrambled in many of our illegal and amoral wars. And like, and they would scream at them. They'd go, just stay on brand. And like a guy would go, He's like, he's selling vests, you know, and he'd be like, they told me to do things in Iraq. I didn't want to do them. I didn't want to, I can't stop hearing the voice. And then like, like Gary Vee and Grant Cardone, everybody would be like, just stay on brand. Stay on brand. <laughs> and, and that would be, that would be nice because then the homeless people would have to remember, oh shit, yeah, that's not fun. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants that. I have to be. But I mean, I, if there's 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 got to be a route for a lot of these homeless people to develop their own sense of self worth through American capitalism. Capitalism has to save the day here, and I think it can if we start a big reality show where psychopathic homeless people attack each other and vilify each other <laughs> on camera to show who can withstand that really, really, that gauntlet of really tough shit that it takes to be a fucking killer. Because I'm getting sick of this. I'm getting sick of feeling bad for the unhoused, and I'm getting sick of it. I want them on television now. If we're not going to kill them, I want them to be on TV because I've always wanted to be on TV. And I think being on TV is nice. I think it's a nice thing. And I think if you live in Los Angeles, it, it always crosses your mind. And I think there's a lot of great shows here. And there's a great show about homeless people. Just put the cameras in the tents Select a few of them. Select a few. What about a homeless big brother? Ten people in like a big tent. In a really big tent. In a parking lot. And at the end of the show, we burn it down. And it seems like, it seems cruel, but then the reality is, they're all like, they escape, and we go, congrats, now you have houses. <laughs> but isn't it nice? So they run out of the tent, and it's full of smoke and stuff. And then they get there and they go, now you have houses. Now you have homes. I don't know what to do. I'm just saying it. Th this whole thing here has gotten so uh, problematic that I'm, I'm, I'm unaware of what to do. I don't know what to do. All I can say is that... Uh, I'm hopeful. I mean, so many people right now, they're working too much. They're stressed out. They're not taking enough time for themselves. Have you ever felt burned out? What did it feel like to you? I felt sad, stressed, stretched too thin. Better help. It's online therapy. They want to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with somebody can help you. Talk about your personal experience with another person who's there to help you. 
It's customized online therapy. It offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. That's BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. Have you ever been sad? Oh, yeah. Have you ever been mad? Oh, yeah. Have you ever felt bad? Yeah, yeah. And what do you do? I use BetterHelp. And then what happened? I feel better. You feel good. Mm -hmm. You feel in the hood? Sure. You feel with the wood. Oh, yeah. So this is the what Rick Caruso is promising if elected mayor. He is going to... This is, again... This is from his mouth. He said he's going to, quote, separate the men from the boys. And this is some of the, so these are some of the, this, these are his programs. These are some of his policies that he's going to do right here. Um, this is very interesting. Again, this is a, yeah, so he said that one, yeah. That's going to be a, they're going to do that down by Hollywood. This is going to be down in Venice Beach, this one. There you go. See that? Right there, Venice Beach. <laughs> Clear everybody out. Again, these are some, and, and we may need it. It may need to happen. All right. It may need to happen. I don't know what to do anymore. The left doesn't, they don't make any sense. They're like, just let people shit on the street and do heroin. And the rights, like, make all those people subscribe to the Daily Wire and start businesses. None of it's right. The cops aren't going to be able to solve everything because, you know, how'd they do with that Uvalde, by the way? Isn't it great? And I understand the need to have cops. I, I keep, you know, people think I'm a fascist because I say we need police. Um, but this Uvalde thing really shows you that there are some cops out here that it's just not great. Uvalde schools police chief. I didn't know I was in charge of the shooting scene. Yeah, well. Yeah, it's a lot of, you know. Well, all we hear is how brave the cop, you know, everybody's brave and the cops are brave and, you know, it's brave. They, they just didn't, you know, they didn't do anything. But. Yeah, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Run into school? He should say that. He should go, what did you expect me to do? Like run in the school? Save your own kids. These were all the brave police that uh, didn't run into the school. Mm. I have friends that are cops. All my friends that are cops, like they would run into school and start shooting the kids because they're so, it's crazy. But, you know, I mean... What if homeless people guarded schools and we paid them to do that because they're like terrifying and you'd have to shoot through them to get to the kids? <laughs> what if you had to shoot through homeless people to get to the kids? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a bad idea to just have a bunch of homeless people outside of a school? You'd have to shoot through them like as a shield, use homeless people as a human shield to protect the children. There's worse ideas than the ones I'm talking about. Francis Ellis is coming up. He's a fun guy from Barstool Sports. We've got a musical guest. The episode isn't that long tonight because I can't talk. I can't fucking speak. I just wanted to come in here and celebrate. Uh, what was I? What are we celebrating? We're celebrating, uh, uh, well, there's a lot to celebrate, I suppose. Like what? Uh, it's Pride Weekend this weekend. It's, oh, it's uh, Pride Month. It's a whole month. Yeah, well, they're doing the Pride Parade this weekend. It's a, it's a Pride Parade. You think Rick Caruso will be at that? Gay people love him. They all, they're all really? rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're all lying. Oh, come a little what bit. The, the, oh, yeah, who cares? <laughs> what, the four fat lesbians on Twitter who write for, like, no one respects, who write for these shows. Nobody watches on Hulu. 
on these garbage shows on fucking Fox and shit. These four fat non-binary people, they don't like them. Yeah, but a lot of gay people are rich and they want Caruso when they're putting a homeless in a frying pan. So, I mean, let's cut it out. You think gay people left their homes in the middle of America, you know, where their parents hated them. They came here, they got successful so that they could step in piss and shit. This is, you know what I mean? This, this isn't, they don't want that. But of course, there's like some fat unicorn on Twitter who's like, you know, it's just some fat woman who's cross-eyed tweeting about how Rick Caruso is like, you know, the fucking, you know, Boston Strangler. Who's the one from London? Oh, the Jack the Ripper? Yeah, she's like Jack the Ripper. Yeah. And gay people don't care. So Rick Caruso go down there in suits and just put in hundreds and like twinks fucking G-strings. Daddy Caruso. You think Rick Caruso will go down there in full leather as like a leather daddy? That'd be great. If he's on a float with billionaires, they're all just throwing money. He's dressed up like a leather daddy. And he's like, I'm going to make this city safe so you can get sucked off in a park again. He gives a big speech. He's like, get, this city used to be a place where you could go get AIDS in a park. <laughs> quietly without worrying if some fucking schizophrenic was going to throw his own shit at you unless you were into that. Getting shit thrown at you used to be something that was prearranged in this city. Now it's not. I want to make this city safe for random strangers to suck each other's cocks without knowing each other's names on benches again the way it used to be. I want to make this city safe where women and children were horribly abused by rich people and thrown into the street to deal with it. <laughs> I want to make this city safe for the people that made great art like Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, Brett Ratner, and others. I want to make this city safe. <laughs> for, you know? People like Brian Singer would take, you know, 15-year-olds that got here from Omaha, <laughs> drug them up and use them like popsicles. <laughs> I want this city safe, like he's doing this speech. Because I want this city safe because it's been taken over by fat lesbians with no sense of humor. That's not what L.A. is about. It's about fags with guns. People are clapping. <laughs> There's a woman with a baby who's crying. He's like, the movies we make are shit now. The TV shows suck. He goes, if you're anything like me, you got to watch a Filipino maid got beat to death on the dark web to come. Somebody's clapping. He goes, if you want to laugh now, you just have to watch old fucking videos <laughs> in 9-11. He goes, you can't even laugh unless you're watching 9-11 videos. If you're anything like me, people are going, yeah, fuck yeah, Rick. This city's gone in a bad direction. He goes, this is a city of beautiful people that's been taken over by ugly, untalented monsters. I want fat people out of here. <laughs> I want fat people to feel the shame they felt when I first moved here, where a fat woman would break down in tears after what I would say to her at a grocery store. I want that L.A. back. People are just screaming, Caruso, Caruso. I want cruelty back. I want evil back. By the way, I would vote for him if he did this. I bet I don't, I don't even live here, but I, I'm mm. saying the reality is that's what we need, like an inspiring speech about what L.A. is. He's like, L.A. is a city about people that move here to become something, and in order to do that, they destroy everything about themselves. And then they become something completely different than the thing they were. They reinvent themselves. 
And then at the end of their lives, they all get trapped in these big mansions and they end up in pools. Nobody understands what it's like to be them. And they're just fucking paranoid demons. And then people want to be them and they move here. They befriend these demons. That's what LA is. It's a city about freedom. He goes, it's the greatest city in the world. LA is such a great city. He just starts screaming. He's like, <laughs> he goes, I want blood. I want blood again. People are like, yeah, this is beautiful. <clears throat> I mean, maybe he'll go down there. Pride, Pride Week, give a real speech. He's like, lesbians used to be in the valley. Keep their mouths shut. This city is about closeted CEOs getting sucked off by fucking coked out rent boys. He's clapping. It's not about fat lesbian comedy writers <laughs> who look like shit. <laughs> they look like shit. They have no sense of humor. They're gross. They should be in New York. Everyone's clapping. I don't care where you went to school. That's New York shit. We don't have school shootings. Our kids are too stupid. They're all on OnlyFans. You can't traffic our kids. They traffic themselves. People clapping. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> My son's a DJ, for Christ's sake. <laughs> but I mean, you know, we wish him well. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Isn't he? He's going to be okay, isn't it? Isn't it going to be okay? It's going to be okay. We had Francis Ellis uh, coming up here at Barstool Sports. What did he do? He hit a woman in the head with a brick or something? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, they don't let him work anymore. He uh, hit a woman in the head with a brick. I don't know what he did. He must have done something. Oh, he made a joke on a blog about a woman who's dead. Well, <laughs> what are you going to do? Rick Caruso left. Rick Caruso he should have a he should have a video where a campaign ad where it's just some models like sucking them off. You just see her head going up and down, and he's got a gun to her head like this as he's going up and down. And he goes, "You know my favorite thing about L.A." He goes, "Some people say it's the weather, but he goes, you know what I like about it? <laughs> you just see her head bobbing up and down. He's got a gun right on her head. He's like, you know what I really like about L.A." He goes, I liked it. It goes, it goes, uh, he goes, it's something that just gets in you. You can't really explain what it is. It's just a certain magic that the city has, you know, in her head. It's just, and he's like, okay, get ready. I'm close. And he's just jamming the gun in her head. He goes, I'm close. I'm close. And it's like, this ad was paid by for Rick Caruso. <laughs> Um, he'll be fine. This city's going to be fine. He'll solve it all if he gets elected. Mm -hmm. What do you? What's a serious proposal for the homeless? What do? You, what can you really do? I was reading uh, in Santa Monica how they solved it in the nineties. How'd they do it? They ship them off. Where do they go? I think Palmdale. They always put them in Palmdale. Yeah, they give them a free bus pass, and they just. They just ship them off somewhere else. Interesting. Yeah. I looked up the most homeless people are in Santa Cruz, outside San Francisco, and I think my theory is they must just bust them down there because it's outside San Jose. They must just keep pushing them further and further south. Interesting. Mm. I don't know what to do. Part of me thinks we should just have like burn pits where we just burn them alive. <clears throat> and part of me thinks we have to build affordable housing. 
it's between those two ideas. One of them would be a burn pit where they would be burned alive and then used to fertilize. Can you use people as fertilizer? I don't think after you burn them. Oh, interesting. I'm trying to avoid comparisons to the Holocaust. I don't want it to feel like the Holocaust if we burn these people. Is there a way to do a death camp that's not reminiscent of the Holocaust for homeless people in L.A.? Like, is there a way to do it where it does, it's not like Holocaust vibes? Yeah. There's a way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. You could use uh, water, like a drowning. Well, somebody told me about this thing called doula. It was this, um, this thing I didn't invest in, but it's water cremation. Oh. Water cremation now because it's better for the environment. So what if we just w- use water to cremate homeless people? You cooked them in a pot. Oh. So if we cooked them in a pot, you can cook people in a pot, right? So I don't know. I, 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 there's two, I have two ideas. One is that we cook them in a pot. Number two, like a very big industrial pot. Like it's one of the biggest pots you've ever seen. Mm. And we cook people in it. The other thing is that we try to build affordable housing. And get them in that. But I don't, but I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because that might not work. It, we may have to do the pot anyway. So you just do the pot now? That's my whole thing with the affordable housing. It may not work. So do you just do the pot now? Can this be a real issue? Because some of the people in the crowd are going to go, do the pot. Just do the pot now. And I'm going to go, because we could do one or two things. I would give people the option. I'd go, if I was Rick Caruso, I'd go, we could build affordable housing or we could put the people in this pot that we've built and cremate them using water, high-pressure water at a high heat. We, 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 we stew them alive. And, or we could do this housing where we build 30 units of, and then people just start yelling, do the pot, Rick. Rick, do the pot. Well, we could try to get them in. We'll put them in a job training program. What kind of water goes in the pot? Are you sure they won't survive? They can't get out, right? Well, we could then maybe, when they're in a job training program, we offer incentives to companies to then hire them. But what do you do with the waste from the pot after they've been dealt with? I mean, all I can say is uh, that I hope everyone is well. Happy uh, Pride to everyone. Why are you laughing? No, it's just, it's, it's, it's very funny to say all those things and then wish uh, people well. Well, what are you going to do? People need to be wished well. People need that. People need that in their lives. I just want to get like so low. I want to be so like out of it where I just like I'm like kind of like this. I want to broadcast like this, like to the end, like where I go, like <laughs> like at the end, I go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon show. <laughs> the homeless have breached the studio again. What about what about Barry Weiss? Can't she go out and give these homeless people a talking to? What if she goes out and gives them a talking to? You know, uh, her wife Nellie Bowles wrote a, a, a good thing about the San Francisco homeless. It was about how San Francisco became. She wrote something about the homeless in San Francisco, and I read the article, and it was pretty good. In the Atlantic, maybe. Yes. Yes. Uh, how San Francisco became a failed city and how it could recover. Now, I wanted to hire a homeless person to write a, a like a rebuttal called San Francisco is Great, G-R-A-T-E. She makes some points here about the homeless. You know, $117,000 salary counts as low income for a family of four in San Francisco. 
<coughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. It's so fucking nuts, mm -hmm. right? It's crazy. It's a good article. Yeah. And she writes about um, how San Francisco became such a problem and then what to do about it. And her idea is basically if you get a big pot... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You can't put people in a big pot. But, like, what would you have to do? You'd have to get them. You'd have to sweep them off the streets. And then you'd have a big, you'd have a, like a, a like, picture a chemical treatment facility mm -hmm. where they'd be dissolved very quickly. You'd throw them in something that would dissolve their bones and skin and teeth, but where would that waste go? Could you shoot it into space? So what you would do essentially is you would dissolve the people in a pot, mm -hmm. and then you would shoot. You would shoot their waste into space. Yeah, you could. Uh, I guess you could profit off of it, maybe. Like if you turn it into vitamins or. Pills, maybe, of some kind? You wouldn't go in immediately. You'd get a few chances. But, like, on the third chance, and then the cops would also have that over your head. They go, you go into the pot. If you, if third time, third time's a charm, third time's a pot. People in the street be like, yo, that motherfucker went to the pot. <laughs> and we would, we would use chemicals to dissolve people. And they would go away. It's a thought. It's a thought. Rick Caruso is like, she's like, remember when your mother, she goes, I'm Italian. Your mother would have a pot of sauce. But we got a pot of problems. But we're going to dissolve people, their skin and their bones and their <laughs> teeth, using a high, highly effective an environmentally safe chemical that allows people to be dissolved within a matter of minutes and eliminated from our society. Never to be seen or heard from it. And every person that gets dissolved, they like do a little a nice thing, like they do like a nice, it's like there's a thing that happens. It's not like a total loss. Okay. There's like a rib, they put a ribbon around a fence or something. <laughs> and then we just have a very long fence. <laughs> And every time we dissolve a human being, we put a ribbon around the fence. Because it's not, it's not going to get better if we don't start thinking about how to dissolve people in a pot. People can get mad at this, and people can get offended at it. But what else are you going to do? What are you going to do? Give, give them all jobs at Geico? Put them in a pot. The judge looks at you right in the eye, you go to a court, and she goes, it's your third time here, and you know what that means. You go into the pot. And the person goes, and then she just clicks the gavel, mm -hmm. and there's no appeals. You don't even spend the night in jail. Mm -hmm. You're taken from the courthouse to the pot. Immediately. Before you know, it, before you know what happens. They, they, they hit you... While you're standing there in court, they hit you with a uh, a tranquilizer. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up for a minute. Right before, like it's a, it's a, maybe an hour trank. You wake up for a minute, you're in a little cell, and there's a door, and the cell gets really, really like hot. Like your feet, you, you got to like, you got to open the door. So you end up opening the door, and then you just, you, it's, it's kind of like, there's like a wall that pushes you out and you go right into the pot. Right into the pot. And you're dissolved immediately, instantaneously. <laughs> this is jobs. This is a great way to, to figure it out. And if a lot of people out there are interested in this and excited about this, 
right to Rick Caruso. Tweeted him. <clears throat> Do I heard? I'm very excited about your 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 new program to dissolve the homeless people using chemicals. Can you go into this? Can you speak on this? Rick, I was at a party in Hancock Park, and one of my friends said he was going to be working for the company that provides you the chemicals in which you were going to dissolve the homeless people once they had had their last shot. They're going right to the pot. That could be his slogan. Mm -hmm. Caruso. What's his slogan now? Does he have one? He's got to have something, right? He doesn't really have one. Huh. For the love of LA. I think that's it, yeah. You know what I think it should be? To the pot. Rick Caruso, you go to the pot. Go up for a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. That's sweet. It's everybody at the uh, Grove. It's everyone at the Grove. It's all the employees at the Grove. He said, you're all fired if you don't get out into the street with Dodgers jerseys, look as Hispanic as possible, and endorse me right now. <clears throat> that guy in the wheelchair he looked at Rick. He goes, hey, Rick, I really enjoyed this photo shoot. Can I have the rest of the day off? Rick goes, get the, get the fuck back and work right now. I'll kill you. You want to go to the pot? <laughs> and if the pot works in LA, it's pots for everyone. Pots for San Francisco. Mm. Dallas will have a pot. They'll already put in a pot. <laughs> oh yeah. They'll put in a they'll put in a frying pot. Dallas goes, we fry people here in oil. This is a good story. Rick's grandparents came to America from Italy through Ellis Island. They were very big supporters of Mussolini. It's weird that they put it in the bio, but it's funny. His father served in World War II, even though he disagreed with America's stance. It's odd. It's in a bio. <laughs> it's very funny. It's in a bio. In 1997, Rick founded Caruso, creating tens of thousands of jobs and building some of Southern California's most beloved community centers, uh, including the Grove. He served two stints at the Department of Water and Power, reformed the LAPD, and oversaw a 30% reduction in crime as president of the LA Police Department. I mean, he probably will clean this in. Listen, LA needs somebody, and it, it probably has to be this guy because things are really bad. I just hope he gets a pot. And cooks people in it. Today, he's running for mayor of L.A. to put an end to street homelessness, make our community safer, safer, clean up corruption, and construct a very large pot in which he will use environmentally safe chemicals to dissolve homeless people immediately on contact. Wow. Rick Caruso. He's a good man. He do, he probably does need to win. As much as we joke, he probably does need to win because, I, you know, I don't know what, what else there is here to do. I know I'm out of frame. I like when I'm out of frame like this. That is very funny. That is very it's funnier. It's funnier to not be in a frame. Of the, it's funnier to be completely out of frame like this. Like that's a better show to just do this. Mm -hmm. Because you know, people get mad when we don't do audio only. When we do uh, audio only episodes, mm. there's something funny about me being just completely out of frame for the entire episode. It's great comedy. This important PSA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is your public pubic service announcement, and the news you've been waiting for. The Manscaped engineering team has confirmed that they have successfully created the Lawnmower 4.0. Trimmer, which is now available for purchase in the USA and Canada. This new trimmer was just released only moments ago, and we are the first to get our hands on it and share the news. Just over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Tim Dane. 
I'm one of the first people to try it, and I'm blown away by the performance, the craftsmanship, the details on the 4.0. They're next level. They're next level. I'm telling you right now, it's waterproof. You can groom in the shower and not have to worry about making a mess on the bathroom floor. Okay? If you're still trimming your face with your bull trimmer, time to, time to make some changes. Everybody needs Manscaped. Everybody wants to support our show. It's a great way to support the show. It's the best trimmer that you can get your hands on. Get 20% off and free worldwide shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Tim D. <coughs> no person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth and your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free worldwide shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Tim D. That's 20% off and free worldwide shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Tim D. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. I love Raycon earbuds. I, I tell people all the time, they're less expensive than the earbuds that we all know what we're talking about. These are the best earbuds to have. They're better. Eight hours of playtime, 32-hour battery life. When you need to charge, it's super easy. You can even do it wirelessly. It's a huge selling point. Raycons, you get the same quality audio as other premium audio brands, but half the price. Yes, really. But that doesn't mean they won't last. I mean, man. Raycons, if they fall, they can get lost in the rain and snowstorms, they still work afterwards. It's no wonder Raycons Everyday Earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. I only have Raycon. Do you only have Raycon right now? Yeah, I mixed the show with the Raycons. I love the Raycons. Check out Raycons wireless earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave them a five-star review too. Go to buyraycon.com. Slash Tim today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim to, court, to score 15% off. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash Tim. Francis Ellis joins us, blogger at one time at Barstool Sports. You had an incident that changed your life. Mm. Can you go into that a little bit? Sure. Um, I wrote a blog about a woman, a woman who was missing in Utah. Her sorority sisters had told the FBI she was missing. Right. So there was sort of this legally blonde element that I thought was funny. It's funny. Yeah. And then uh, I just wrote a blog, and two hours after I wrote it, she was found uh, brutally murdered Ugh. and then i obviously looked tasteless uh in in after the fact it's unfortunate and i was fired uh and you yes were one of the first people to yeah. call me yes to let me know that the world had not ended right you know in batman yeah. when, he, when he says yeah a hero can be anybody even someone putting a coat over a boy's shoulders to let him know that his his right. world hasn't ended right and you were that for me Right. What did I say again? You called me and you said, buddy, what happened? And you told me that my life wasn't over. Right. Because all I was seeing were torrents of right. horrific headlines about what a monster I was. How could I possibly have done this? Uh, and you know I what thought, probably happened? I don't, what's really fun is when these things happen, you call the person, you go, it's going to be okay. Then you call six other people and go, they are so fucked. <laughs> like, I think I did that. I think I called like seven people. I was like, that guy's fucked fucked <laughs> and then i think i called you and i went it's gonna be fine yeah because that's what most of us do yeah i was calling people that didn't even know you i'm like he's shot he's f completely fucked well, I, I didn't know that so but that's what everyone does that's yeah. what we ev it's what everyone does yeah. i call everyone and tell them they're gonna be okay because it's true it meant a lot to me it well i was right yeah you were nobody things cared. are better now yeah right yeah nobody nobody they moved on to far more torn up pastures, I guess. There's other problems. Yeah, Ep The Epstein story broke three days after my- You thing. wonder if it was three days before, you might've been okay. It's a good question. You ever think about that? Yeah, mine would've been lost in the shuffle. 72 hours, maybe no one cared. I know, I wonder. Do, does Portnoy ever say to you like, hey, I'm sorry it went down like that? No, yeah. And Business Insider, they tried to run a hit piece on me. Is that right? Yeah. This guy that used to work for them was a, a, a comic. It didn't work out. Mm. Amazing. And he went to go work for Business Insider, and he called me, did an hour-long interview with me. Mm. They uh, said, hey, Will, and I called him like seven months later. I went, what the fuck? Yeah, there you go. Tim Dillon blows whistle on Business Insider's failed hit piece. Oh, I remember that. I, I called the uh, writer back, and I went, hey, what happened? 
And the writer said they were uninterested because he goes, I interviewed you for an hour and I didn't come to the conclusion that you were like a right-wing psychopath. <laughs> so they didn't want to run the article unless it was that angle. Wait a minute, what is that Kyle Rittenhouse tweet they have for me? I'm not sure. Kyle Rittenhouse was crying because he accidentally misgendered a court clerk. That kind of responsibility is rare to see in young men. Who could get angry at that? I mean, who could? Why would anyone be mad at that? They put that in an, I mean... Um, I don't even go on Twitter too much anymore. I just, yeah. we tweet the clips. Mm. Taking a minute. Good. It's just too much. You've earned it. I'm, I've earned a minute. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see what's going to happen. But now this has changed your life. Now you're actually working on things that are very important to society at large. That's right. And what what are they? Well, let's call it a... Because you're white. A large PR tour. You're like myself. white. Yes. You're rich. Right? I mean, I, I I'm, am I allowed to say that? Sure. You're kind of like a Yale legacy. Uh, I went to Harvard. Okay, Harvard. Yeah. I apologize. But no one in my family did. Interesting. So they you're the first Yale. one. They were all Yale. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah, you because I did your podcast years and years ago. Your grandfather was like one of the founding guys of the CIA, right? He was in Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones. So and they went to CIA, yeah. Interesting. So it's amazing that you do this. Isn't that amazing a little? Yeah. That it went from that to this? Yeah. Isn't that the American empire is the end of it, really? <laughs> The guy's got a keyboard. We're in Hollywood. He's doing a thing. Anyway, but the point is, you could be in Morocco stabbing someone with a poison pen. But but you're here now, and it's what's important. It's what, it's what your grandfather came to this country for you to do is play on a keyboard. Yeah. Now, it is. I mean, he That's wasn't what? his. We've been here a long time. He right. was not. He did not come to. We America. didn't come here. He's he's a pilgrim, right? He's one of those guys. Our, yeah. We, but I mean, come come in the. Spiritually, from sure. Europe. Yeah. You know, this is why they, they came here eventually, so yeah. that we could do this. It is true. We have the privilege to do fake business for years and years. Ah, I love the fake business. I know. It's, it's, I've it's, done it myself. We have a line that's coming out. We have a clothing line. It's, it's very good, but we have another one now happening. Um, what, what, what You call people up sometimes and fuck with them? Well, I, I, when I was doing stand-up in New York early on, I was tutoring. Uh, right. And I started a tutoring company. Right. Just a small thing. Yeah. To just make us more legit. Sure. And uh, I then called all of the sort of most prestigious tutoring agencies in New York. Yes. Posing as a father to find out their rates. Yeah. And their like techniques and things. And I would describe my daughter having severe needs educationally. Yes. And get the price points and all of that. And I mean, it was fun. So you used to figure out where you needed to be. Y yeah. Right. It okay. was fun pretending to be a dad. And, it's and always fun. Lie to these agencies. It's and always fun to make fun, to make up things. Yeah. yeah. It's great. It, it really is. It's always fun to waste people's time. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only reason we're here on earth. Yeah. I love it. So now you're doing this new thing and you're, you're finally, or you finally realized you're a white man yep. after all these years. I was told I did not choose it. I know. So you finally, you figured it out. Yeah. And you're like, I'm a privileged fucking guy. Yeah. But then, so now you're embracing this. You've written a song about this mm. where, because you've decided that you're going to have the back of people that have been historically marginalized and yeah. that you kind of understand what they're going through. Yeah, and, and I think more importantly, I, I sort of saw the virtue of people who do defend these people. That's right. More of that, I think that... They're almost more... The people that defend them, I think, are really more important even than the people that are being abused. For sure. Because the people that defend them are like, oh my God, wow. And if they didn't, yeah. we wouldn't know. That's right. They put themselves in front of the imaginary train. Yes, that may or may not be coming. That's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. That's those are the people that I want to be. Yeah, the mouthpieces. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I drive my Bentley through a bad area to go to a taco truck, and I see a pit bull chasing a young girl, and I think, you know what I mean? I think, hey, what's going on here? That's what I say to myself. But why don't you tweet it? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to spend some time off Twitter, but. I, when I see that, I feel like I should do more Yes, about that. But all it would take. All it would take. Is a tweet. Is just to let people know yeah. that there's young women being chased by dogs. It might've been her dog. She was happy and smiling. But the point is the whole, the whole thing threw me. I didn't, I didn't get it. 
Also, the lawn, the lawn furniture was oddly mismatched. The point, I didn't understand what was happening. But the point is, it may not have been a violent thing. Um, but this song, I, I wanted to have you on because it spoke to me and because it really is about those people that go out there and they make a difference. Yeah. Even if they're just changing the perception of who they are, it's still important. Mm -hmm. It's important to be, like some of them are out right now talking about the LA Sheriff's race. I didn't even know it was happening, but it's very important. And there was a virtual sheriff Zoom the other day that we all should have joined to hear the different sheriff candidates and what they're going to do about uh, Nazi gangs in the LAPD, which apparently are a lot of them, too many. Uh, but one of our uh, one of the people I know on uh, Instagram is a television writer is deeply involved in the sheriff's race in Los Angeles, making sure that everything's on the up and up. More power to them. Um, but I love this song because it speaks uh, to me. It's the hero, the heroic group out there. Have you ever spoken to that girl's family that was brutally murdered? Have you ever reached out? You ever say, sorry? No. Right. Um, humbly, I believe that they probably had too much going on to even have noticed. No, I don't think that's true. What your joke was the biggest thing of that week for them. Yep. So if you could really, I mean, maybe go visit them and bring cameras and sit down with them and film it. And it would just be you at their table and just saying, hi, I'm Francis Ellis and I made this joke. I'm sorry about what happened to your daughter, but I didn't kill her. I made a joke and have them forgive you for the joke. Yeah. Have them forgive you and like take your hand. It could be a beautiful moment. I wonder if enough time has passed. Good question. Yeah. You might want to wait a little. Those wounds might still be a little fresh. That's a good point. And how did you, I mean, this is sad the way that it, 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 it's sad when anyone dies. I've said that before, haven't I? Yes, you have. And many I, times, well, many no, times. and I've meant that. I'm not being facetious. Mm -hmm. When anyone dies, there's a, there's an element of, uh, you go, what? You know, and then, then it's also sad and it's very tough. <laughs> it is. I, you know, but it's shocking too. People found in parks. It's crazy. These national parks aren't good for anyone. Um, so please, you play this song that I love and love and love. This is Francis Ellis, used to be from Barstool Sports, before he made fun of the dead. Uh, and now, where are you? If people like you mm. and want more of your thing, where can they find it? Yeah. If, if someone goes, my sister was just murdered, and I want you to get her, where can they get Get you. Where can they hire you to do a roast of the dead? Uh, on on my podcast. Lovely. It's called Oops the Podcast. Oops the Podcast. It's Julio Gallarotti. Harkening back to. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Oops the Podcast and social media wise, if they want to find you. Uh, Francis Ellis, you'll find me on. You'll Instagram, find them. Twitter. Take it away. This song's amazing. Thanks, Tim. Cop pulled me over and asked why I was speeding. I said I'm headed to the mountain for a big day of skiing. He said I figured it was that from the skis on your rack. And then we both kind of chuckled as he handed me back. My license registration told me try to slow down. We've got a lot of people speeding through the stretch of our town. I promised that I would, I said I understood. And I always try my best to drive the way that I should. He said goodbye, enjoy the slopes, and I drove off down the road. But when I got around the bend, I put the pedal to the floor. And when I finally arrived, I was greeted by a sight that made me shiver and quiver and shake with fright. Cause the line at the chairlift was 50 people long. By the time I took my first run, all the powder was gone. All because some local cop had to flex on me. I'm just another victim of brutality brutality it can happen to you if it happened to me I understand the nuances of brutality the winter is a time of darkness 
When the sun goes down early and everyone is heartless, the days are short and the nights are long, and you'll wake up with the feeling that it's all going wrong. When you feel like you're stuck in a hole, and your brain starts to tell you it can't take anymore, and you no longer care to learn what lies around the bend, so you start to think of ways to bring your life to an end. Don't. Instead, take a trip to Tulum. Find a beach in Turks and Caicos. Snorkel a lagoon. Find that good weed in Jamaica. Buy a house in Southampton, Tim. Get that going. Put your worries on the shelf. The purpose of MLK Weekend is to utilize your wealth. Oh, 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 oh. spend it on yourself. There's no price on mental health. Don't kill yourself. A L L Y. I'm a motherfucking ally. Ally, I know just what you're going through, and I feel it too. And I'm here for you online all the time. Every day around the world, a woman gets robbed. She makes 30% less with the same exact job. She endures the horny glances, the delusional advances. Guys like, hi, my name is Francis from the toxic male mob. But the time has now come to bring the wage gap to an end. Time to rip down these structures that were only built for men. Time to take a wrecking ball to the ancient patriarchy. Say your boss sent you a dick pic at the holiday party. I'm a motherfucking ally, ally, I know just what you're going through, and I feel it too, and I'm here for you online all the time, L-G-B-T-Q, she, her, he, him, they, their animals are friends, not food, Jada Pinkett's lack of hair, and me to save Ukraine, put a stop to Asian hatred, microplastics, Fishing. Bloggers who joke about missing women, man spreading on public transit. Leah Thomas, you pen swimming. N double ACP, border family separations. Joe Rogan's misinformation, spreading fears of vaccination, cultural appropriation. Louis C.K.'s masturbation. Me, me, look at me. I'm so full of empathy, I'm on the right side of history. Just like and share my tweet, tweet, tweets like ALLY. I'm a motherfucking ally. Ally, I know just what you're going through, and I feel it too. And I'm here for you online all the time. Thank you. Francis Ellis, everybody, we love that. Thank you so much. Thank you for changing your life. Ah. It's Thank you for pleasure. changing your life and realizing <laughs> that there's a lot of good that can be done. Yes, yes. There's a lot of good that can be done, and you're doing it. I'm trying, man. Yeah, I didn't have a choice. No, you're trying, and that's important. Yeah. Uh, you know, beautiful. Thank you so much. Go find this guy on social media. Go listen to his podcast. Thanks Francis Ellis, me. thank Appreciate you so much, it. brother. See you guys.